offer from Ms. Lerner's attorney to provide a proffer to the committee. I want that proffer. I wanted to hear what her attorney would have said. And I want that information. I think that the entire committee is entitled to that information. As a matter of fact, I think the Congress is. It doesn't give her immunity, and it does not bind the committee. But it could have given us some of the information the chairman was asking about on yesterday. As a matter of fact, he asked uh, Ms. Lerner some 10 questions. And all of those could have been, uh, after she pled the fifth, uh, those could have been answered uh, by a proffer on, on, from her attorney. So we ended up not getting any information. So not only were Chairman Issa's actions an abuse of authority, they were in fact counterproductive. In my opinion, the House Republicans have abandoned responsible oversight by repeatedly declining to take basic investigative steps promoting unnecessary political conflict and making false claims about the White House. Last year, before the committee received any documents or, any, or interview, interviewed any witnesses, Chairman Issa claimed on national television, and I quote, quote, this was the targeting of the president's political enemies effectively and lies about it during the election year, end of quote. The problem is that even Inspector General Russell George found no evidence of any White House involvement or political motivation. The committee has now interviewed 38,000 employees who have all said the same thing. There was no White House involvement or political motivation. An IRS official in Cincinnati, a self-identified conservative Republican manager, told us the same thing. It is interesting that that gentleman has never been brought before the committee. It started with him. Yet, Republicans remain fixated on falsely accusing the White House of targeting its political enemies, wasting millions of dollars in an attempt to reignite their partisan inquiry before the November elections. Sadly, this is only one example of a larger pattern of unsubstantiated claims. Just two weeks ago, Chairman Issa claimed at a Republican fundraiser in New Hampshire, that former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton told Leon Panetta to stand down after the attacks in Benghazi. The Washington Post fact checker gave him four Pinocchios for this claim. Last fall, he gave him four Pinocchios when he said Hillary Clinton personally authorized security reductions in Benghazi because a State Department cable had her name on it. And just this past Sunday, Chairman Issa went on national television and basically repeated these claims again. So the Post fact checker gave him four more Pinocchios. Honestly, I can't keep up with all the, of Chairman Issa's Pinocchios. I understand that the House Republicans have already called it quits in terms of, of legislating any more this year. But the result is that all they have left, they have left with are these reckless and abusive investigations. This is a huge waste of taxpayer resources, and it does absolutely nothing for the American people. We need to raise the minimum wage. We need to enhance the earned income tax credit. We need to ensure that our citizens get health care. In short, we need to do the work that the American people sent us to Washington to do. And now it gives me a privilege to, uh, to uh, introduce the chairman of the Ways and Means the ranking member of the Ways and Means Committee. Oh, Mr. Levin, I'm sorry. Let me just try to place this in context. As you know, the Ways and Means Committee, as well as government oversight, have had jurisdiction over this matter. And from the beginning, it was clear what the Republicans were after. There is zero evidence of political motivation. We've had five hearings, ways and means. $14 million has been spent by IRS. So with no evidence, what's going on here? The political motivation isn't that of anybody but the Republicans. I remember the first hearing that we had, the chairman said 
There was a culture of cover-up. There was zero evidence of this. So what's happening here is that the Republicans are determined to keep this issue of the IRS alive as part of their twin strategy, attacking health care and essentially claiming without any foundation political motivation trying to tie it to the White House. Well, what happened yesterday, and I saw Elijah the, the tape on it, I found it hard to believe except the history of the chairman. Essentially, what happened yesterday was this political strategy of the Republicans going berserk. And I just want to say one last thing. I've been told when asked by some of you of the speaker what he thought, he said that the chairman was in his rights or something like that. Uh, that can't be the protocol of this institution. When I saw Darrow Issa in action yesterday, I thought back of all my years here, and I think he has brought this to an unbearable crescendo. It has to stop. A privilege res rev a resolution was filed today. I hope it can be brought up, and I hope the Republicans will decide there is some water's edge to politics. I guess next will be another gentleman from Michigan, the ranking member on judiciary, Mr. Conyers. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> you're, you're almost as nice and polite as Elijah Cummings himself. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm here uh, merely to uh, point out on the committee that I've been on longer than anybody else on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, it's beginning to show a little bit of... Uh, partisanship, and one of the things that is disturbing to me is that we get uh, bills uh, that are clearly going nowhere, that the Senate probably has a stack of bills from the House Judiciary, the Senate Judiciary Committee, in which they uh, point out that they have no intention of taking them up. And so we keep sending them frequently tired old bills, limiting abortion rights, sometimes bashing immigrants, uh, favoring or taking it easy on corporate polluters and other wrongdoers. And uh, uh, we're, we're considering even... Uh, today another anti-regulatory bill that will force agencies to prioritize and speed, prioritize speed over safety and private interests over public good. And so uh, we're, we're hoping that we can discontinue this democracy suspended uh, business and uh, urge our chairman to uh, discontinue obstructing the legislative process and sometimes ignoring the priorities of the American people. Thank you. Um, well, it's great to be here with uh, my colleagues to talk about this serious issue. I think last fall, uh, during the 16-day government shutdown, you saw Republicans suspend democracy in the entire House of Representatives when they actually changed the rules uh, in order to continue uh, shutting down the government. And what we saw yesterday was democracy being suspended in committees of the House of Representatives. Uh, it was an incredible abuse of process uh, trying to shut down uh, the ability of uh, Mr. Cummings uh, to make his statement uh, and 
we hope that we're not going to see a continuation of this uh, throughout uh, the House of Representatives. It's really unfortunate because as a result of the antics and abuse we saw from Mr. Issa, uh, we're not able to focus on the things the American people uh, want to be focused on. Uh, we were focused yesterday uh, in the Budget Committee trying to talk about the proposals the President has put forward to uh, create more jobs uh, in the country. Uh, to expand opportunity to more people uh, in the country. Uh, and yet, on the floor of the House, we were voting for the 50th time to end the Affordable Care Act. And in the Oversight and Government Affairs Committee, uh, we saw an effort to shut down uh, democracy in order to try to protect uh, this failing narrative that Republicans have about this political conspiracy coming out of the White House. They have not a shred of evidence. They're getting frustrated. Uh, and instead of owning up to that failure, uh, they're lashing out and uh, engaging in abusive process. The last thing I want to say about this is that uh, with respect to uh, the IRS issues, uh, what Republicans are deadly afraid of is that the public will find out who is spending the millions and millions of dollars to try to influence elections around the country. Uh, what interests are trying to buy a Congress uh, that will help adopt policies to support those uh, special interests? That goes to the core of the issue. Uh, this is not, as Republicans would have you believe, about uh, you know, First Amendment rights and right to engage in the political process. People can spend as much money in elections these days as they want, period. The question is whether the public has a right to know who is financing uh, those campaigns. Uh, and for some reason, Republicans are really afraid of letting the public know uh, who is trying to spend gobs and gobs of money uh, to influence these elections. Uh, and that is their, their core concern. And again, uh, as eight of the nine Supreme Court justices have said, transparency is important to accountability, and accountability is fundamental to our democracy. Uh, and again, you see Republicans simply trying to shut down and suspend democracy in the House of Representatives. And it's a, it's a sad day for the United States Congress. Uh, and I'm now pleased to introduce uh, the terrific uh, ranking member of, sorry, the Rules Committee, Louise Slaughter, has been a champion of oh, Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here with my friends this morning. Uh, we have sort of reached the boiling point. And I want to say to you, because none of you look particularly interested in what we're doing up here, that this is really an important piece of work we're talking about here today because democracy is under threat. What has happened in this place week after week in the House of Representatives is nothing short of legislative malpractice. The Congress of the United States used to be the gold standard of legislatures. And we went by Jefferson's manuals year after year after year, Congress after Congress, doing what we could in making this the most incredible country on earth. And now what are we doing? I want to give you numbers. I really want, I'm going to be brief and talk about it. What happened yesterday to uh, Ranking Member Cummings, this is the first time I think that Ranking Members have gotten together to complain. What happened was so outrageous, so demeaning, so unjudicial, so awful in every respect that we just absolutely have reached the boiling point. I have been up for it, and you all, if you pay any attention at all to rules, uh, which is a pretty powerful committee, you know that I've been telling you for years here, uh, the last two years anyway, that every week we are here, the estimated cost, please write this down, the estimated cost of running the House of Representatives for one week is $24 million, okay? Now, the first 33 times that we voted to kill the health care bill, it took 80 hours of legislative work uh, and cost about 80, uh, $48 million. So it's gone way beyond that now. What happened, you've heard about the IRS, was that all the money that they have been spent for nothing. Because we don't do legislation that is intended to ever become law in this land, and I think secretly many of them are glad for that, but because we come here, 435 of us are brought here every week to do what basically amounts to a press release. Please pay some attention to that. The public needs to know. If you have a House of Representatives that talks about nothing but cost, nothing but spending, that will take away food stamps, 
that thinks it's immoral to help with unemployment insurance, but is throwing money away by the buckets full on a useless legislative process here that goes nowhere, and they don't want it to. Now, last election, 1.4 million people more voted Democrat than Republican for the House of Representatives. When we get all the closed bills that we get from, from uh, the Rules Committee, I want you to realize what that means. That means that half the population in the United States, their representatives, are not going to have amendments. Whatever they may want on the bill, whatever they may want to do, is not going to be considered. You call that democracy? Please have for goodness sake, think about what is happening here. We're going to come back next week and we're going to take some old bills out of the Judiciary Committee, John, and try, to try again to humiliate in whatever way they can the President of the United States to try to insinuate that the man is a lawbreaker. I mean, we have sunk to such a low when it comes to legislation. Yesterday, and I want every last one of you to have a piece of it, we put in the record 50 pieces of legislation crying out for attention. But we do the same thing over and over and over again. It's almost gotten to the point where we could stay home and somebody could just go in a room and put repeat on the record player and have it all over again. It is full of sound and fury, meaning nothing. And they want it that way. It is to stimulate their base, whatever it is. But for goodness sakes, every week it's let's destroy the EPA. And I know you've seen this. All regulation is bad, they say. So that all the things that we worked for all these years so that you could breathe clean air, drink clean water, eat safe food, all that means absolutely nothing. And so that's why we're here today. We have got to get the public aroused that the public knows what is happening here. Nothing. Nothing. And for reasons that I really cannot understand, all of you who are so brilliant, and I read you every day, and never take my eyes off the news. I haven't even have been able to read a book in two years because I have to watch what you guys are doing all the time. Never say a word about it. Not a thing. You may say, most unproductive Congress in history, and off you go on to another direction. Think what the money that is being wasted here week after week to make a political statement is costing us not just in terms of infrastructure, education, health care, but what it's costing to our self-respect and the way we look to the rest of the people in this world. And so I'm so happy to be here today. I feel really liberated somewhat today that we're saying we pay attention here. We need everybody to know exactly what's going on here. We're doing our part. We all show up. We go through the motions, but Jefferson's manual is absolutely not a part of what we're doing here. And Abraham Lincoln's adage can be proved again once more. You can fool some of the people all of the time. A strong press paying attention to the government helps us not to be doing that. Thank you very much.